from Loretto Abbey, home to the Sisters of Loretto since 1928, and the Loretto Abbey Secondary School, and with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. My name is Father Pat Fitzpatrick. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from three donors. The first is the Langevin des Rochers family from Ontario in thanksgiving for blessings received and for the living and deceased memories, members of their families. The second is an anonymous donor from Toronto, Ontario for the intentions of their family and for the return of family members to the church and in thanksgiving for blessings received. And the third is Mary Banga and family from Regina, Saskatchewan, for the living and deceased members of the Banga and Fuchs families, and in memory of Archbishop Daniel Bohan, and for all priests who have passed away. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. may the risen Lord be with you. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, almighty and merciful God, that we may in truth receive a share in the resurrection of Christ your Son. He lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. While Paul and Silas were in Philippi, the crowd joined in attacking them and the magistrates had them stripped of their clothing and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After they had given Paul and Silas a severe flogging, they threw them into a prison and ordered the jailer to keep them secured. Following these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and fastened their feet and the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was an earthquake, so violent that the foundation of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, since he supposed that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. The jailer called for lights, and rushing in, he fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them outside and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They answered, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. Paul and Silas spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. At the same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds. Then he and his entire family were baptized without delay. He brought them up into the house and set foot before them. And he and his entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer in God. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. When Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father, he said to the disciples, Now I am going to him who sent me. Yet none of you asks me, Where are you going? But because I've said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. For if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment, about sin because they do not believe in me, about righteousness because I am going to the Father and you will see me no longer, about judgment because the ruler of this world has been condemned. The Gospel of the Lord. We're into the month of May, and May is traditionally Mary's month. May is Mary's month, and I muse at that and wonder why. Poet was Gerald Manley Hopkins. I'd like to just speak a little bit about our Blessed Mother. I hear Mary reminisce and musing about her life. They tell me, Pilate asked the crowd, what am I to do with Jesus called Messiah? Restless, tossing in the dark maybe. Joseph might have spoken to her some night. What are we to do with him, Miriam? 
He, Jesus, was something, somebody different. And on Calvary today, I remember asking, what am I to do with you? Now in my arms once more, his mother at the foot of the cross. What am I to do with you now? When you were taking shape within my womb, I pondered by the open window, puzzling by it all. With Elizabeth, I had a glimpse of what it meant. The mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. But why distant Bethlehem and not at home among our own people up north. Why shepherds? Newborn lambs, they understood, but fragile human birth ill met their awkwardness. And then those foreign speaking, courteously salaming, star struck men from far away and the gifts they brought, gold, frankincense, myrrh, strange gifts for a newborn. Across the valley from our upper room last night lies Temple Mount, where Simeon foresaw a piercing sword. Twelve years later, you asserted your teenage independence and were nowhere to be found on our return journey home from Jerusalem. Once more, I heard your father's voice. What are we to do with him, Miriam? And then came years of sort of piecing it together back home in patient perseverance. In Nazareth, they said, you had my looks. At Cana, I knew what to ask of you when the wine ran out, and you knew what to do with the water. I needed you when Joseph was no longer with me. And then, then, not long after his death, you were gone from me too. You were gone from home. My widow's question was, what am I to do without both of you? One day, the mother in me wanted you back home. I baked the bread you liked. I searched and found you with the ragged and the untrimmed. Sinners, lepers, tax collectors, outcasts, children, bearded men, and kerchief-covered women. I had lost my only son to strangers. I never saw him now. On what they call Skull Hill, Calvary, today, I can offer nothing but my presence and my lap and my enfolding arms. After 30 years, I hold you in my arms again. In Bethlehem, I placed you in a feeding trough that first night and marveled at your sleeping face. Now they'll take you from my arms and place you in a tomb for yet another kind of sleep. But, but, the tomb could not contain you any better than my womb. The day after Sabbath, you were once again at large, dinner on the road, breakfast by the lake, what is it about meals that so attracts you? I baked for you through all these years in Nazareth, 
and now I meet you once again whenever we break bread in Jerusalem. Is that why you chose to come among us? In Bethlehem, the house of bread. The group you left behind needs looking after. My mothering begins again. The Holy Spirit will come upon you, I was told. The explanation Gabriel gave me. And here in prayer, I dare to wait with them for this once again disturbing Holy Spirit. I often think of Joseph's question. What are we to do with him, Miriam? I think I know the answer now. You have to let him go to get him back. At least I had to. Please stand. For all those in the daily TV Mass community that have asked to be included in our prayer intentions book, especially those who are suffering in mind, body, and spirit, that they may receive relief and comfort from Christ's healing touch, we pray to the Lord. For all mothers who have lost a son or a daughter, we pray to the Lord. For those who need support as they go through a difficult time in life, we pray to the Lord. Lord and let's say together Mary's prayer. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. <laughs> Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. <laughs> Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Easter mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy through Christ our risen Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to praise you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with Easter joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts by sending down your spirit upon them so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered to one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, our bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her husband, with the blessed apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another that peace of the Lord.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For those of you at home, join with me now in the act of contrition. Oh my God, I love you with my whole heart, with my whole soul, and with all my strength. I am sorry for all the sins of my whole life that I have committed against you and for the sins I have committed against my neighbor. With my whole heart, I forgive anyone who has ever made me suffer and anyone who has been my enemy. With my whole heart, I ask forgiveness of everyone whom I have wronged and of everyone to whom I have given pain. Amen. Let us pray. Hear, O Lord, our prayers, that this most holy exchange by which you have redeemed us may bring your help in this present life and ensure for us eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go from this Mass in the peace of Christ. Amen. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. Remember, if you can't sponsor a Mass, any contribution, no matter how small, will help keep Daily Mass on television. And you'll receive an income tax receipt for your donation. Jesus, I...